Good morning. Yes, yum. I was in two minds, but I went for it. It's nice to sit and have a cuppa together. Um, it's Friday today. That is day 19. Sunday was 14, 15, 16, 17, 19. Day 19. Yes. And I have not successfully been eating first. I've only done it a couple of times. So that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to spin myself out with all that right now. Um, you know what's interesting about yesterday? Is that I ate really beef yesterday. Wow. <laughs> and that's it. I ate twice. And I don't even remember food being a thing yesterday, apart from the amazing smoker. I made the poor man's ribeye yesterday. I did a smoked chuck eye after I sous vide it for 24 hours. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So, uh, what did I eat? It's a little bit, a little bit uneventful. Um, I got nine and a half hours sleep on Wednesday night because I'm doing Thursday's vlog, right? Day 18. This is the vlog for day 18. Um, nine and a half hours sleep. That was solid. Solid, solid, solid. All right, uh, so coffee in the morning. I was feeling high yesterday. I was so upbeat. I'm like, what is going on with you, Martine? It was... <laughs> and it lasted whew, probably until the afternoon so if I got up at what time did I get up 7 40 I got up late that's late for me probably five hours it lasted about five hours I thought that was pretty cool um but I had a real tummy lots of in the bathroom yesterday liquid lots of liquid so I ended up taking a bit of charcoal some um activated charcoal just to help my tummy because it was starting to hurt like it was not good um and i had very strong cravings in the afternoon like so strong i was just thinking of ways of what i could have can i make an ice cream <laughs> can i what kind of dessert can i have what what oh my gosh my brain was running through it i I went onto YouTube and I started, I, I think I put one search in. Did I put one search in carnival ice cream? And then I went, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going down this rabbit hole. No. So I closed that down. I've actually got an order coming today. I'm very excited from Dirty Clean Food. There was a couple of pieces of meat. I'm not going to tell you about them yet. I'm going to do a video on that. That were like half price and I'm like, but it's bulk, that's the only way I could get it. Otherwise, you know, you're paying 30 bucks for 500 grams of good steak. You're like, you just, it's, uh, that's not in my budget right now. So anyway, it was half price and it was equivalent to, if not a tiny bit cheaper than the beef shed where I go. And none of that is grass fed, grass finished. And this stuff is on dirty clean foods. So I put in an order and it's arriving today. Anyway, why did I get off track to that? I was, look, it's done it again. Ah, oh, there's been an update installed in my Remarkable. That's why it keeps shoving me out. But I'm just going to go back in. I will deal with that after this. Um, strong crave, really strong cravings. Yeah, I was looking for food. Then I stopped looking for food and just I got focused. That's what I was telling you. And so then I decided, no, I'm not going to Google all the sweet things. I am going to work out how to cut up these two pieces of meat that I've got, two big, big pieces of meat, and the other the other little thing, which I'll tell you about in the next video. Um, so I did that, let me just check my notes. Um, then during the day, I think around lunchtime it was, maybe, yeah, probably lunchtime, I got myself some beef 
and that was um, the roast that I cooked the day before in the Instant Pot. I don't know if I'm gonna do it that way again. I think, I'm, I'm thinking I might sous vide it, slice it and sous vide it, the blade roast. I just, anyway, it's amazing when you learn about bigger cuts of meat, what possibilities there are. So, mm. anyway, that, it was delicious. And you know what? I don't know what it is about beef, but when I eat beef, I'm like, okay, I don't want anything else. All right, beef, a hollandaise sauce and sheep's feather. That was really my meal for the day until, wait for it, I had put those sous vide chucks in. Now, I'm sure I mentioned them yesterday, but my husband found them. They're pretty thin. They're not as thick as you can get in the U that I've seen on the videos from the US, but they were, but that was still good. That was still good. Good enough for me to pop them both in a bag. There was two. Um, he got me three, but he kept the third one for himself. He was gonna make a curry. But those two, put them in 24 hours. That was the deal on those, 24 hours at 55 degrees Celsius. And then I put them on the fire. Pit boss. Wow. <laughs> I'll show you some footage while I'm talking of the fire, which is always special. The, um, they obviously just looked uh, brown, not, not, not gray, which was nice. That didn't, from the CV, obviously meat just doesn't look, it's not pink anymore, right? And it's not seared. So it doesn't have all the caramelization. So it's, it's some other color, right? So that doesn't look great, but, um, and I took quite a bit of footage before I flipped it, which I should have done the footage after I flipped it. Um, the majority of it because um, it just has all the colour that it should that it it deserves to be seen in that light because it was phenomenal, phenomenal. I've never done this before. I've never had it. I've just seen it on YouTube a lot, and my husband was like, I made him a special one as well, as I just said, because he decided he wanted to have his piece of chuck and he didn't want to cut, make it curry. So. Um, I said, look, it's a stewing meat. You have to cook it low and slow or instant pot, which look, I've never seen a video on that, but I'm sure it works and it worked. I just did 15 minutes in the instant pot, got it tender. And then he wanted it, he wanted it in slices in the air fryer because this Ninja Air Foodie, this Ninja Foodie Grill XL is amazing, amazing. We like crunchy things, Paul and I, so. Anyway, I digress. I said to him, like, do you want something? He goes, no, I think I'll be fine. And then when he saw it, he went, mm, can I have some more? I went, sure. So anyway, we both loved that. He went back for seconds. I had what you'll see. I'll show you what I had for dinner. And then about an hour later, I just wanted a bit more. So I had, and I forgot to video the second, the second portion I had, which was <clears throat> half the size of the first. But that's what I had. Um... It was, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it was next level. If any of you are wondering about doing it, just do it. If, if there's and even any Aussies watching, you have got to try this. This is amazing. It, you know, I learned it from, you know, people in the US, but look, I'm sure Aussies have been doing it for years. I've just, I've, I, maybe no one does a YouTube on it, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, let's get back to it. So let's just finish with the check-ins. Um, so textures were beef, beef, salt, and fat. Mm -hmm. Textures and tastes. I added tastes in a while ago because I, I worked out that was really important to me too. And creamy coffee. I mean, I, oh, I did give myself a bubbly last night, which I haven't had a bubbly. And I did have heartburn quite strong last night. Interesting, because I had the bubbly yesterday. I haven't had a bubbly, I haven't had any sparkling for a few days. I won't know for sure until I don't have coffee for a week and you know, just this and I don't have the odd random sheep's feta. I mean, they're, they're, they're the things, but again, I'm not putting all that pressure on myself right now. The rule, the golden rule is zero carb for me, right? And carnivore is the way to do that. I do love keto vor, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm doing carnival. Right, cravings are very strong. Emotional grind, no, but I was very high in the morning till about one. I was just, I was sure there was serotonin, dopamine, 
Is it oxytocin? Now all the hormones were going, yes! I was, I was loving it, loving life, loving life yesterday. The toilet we've talked about, heartburn we've talked about, tummy cramps, this was bad. I had some activated charcoal, pain, back pain, knee pain, walking and mobility. Oh, look, I put them all together because they're all linked and they all cause, they should have causation for each other. Um, yesterday, I mean, look, most days it's, you know, a four or a five. Yesterday, yesterday it wasn't too bad. Maybe a three. Yeah, let's put it at that. And yes, a short walk for sure. So that is my check-in for day, what is I have to keep reminding myself because, because I do it the morning after, you know, I just have to think. Day 18, Thursday day 18. So it's little girl day today, today's Friday. And let me just put my pen away. And it's little girl day. I'm excited, can't wait. Um, to see what she's learned, what else she's saying. She's just incredible, this child. She understands things that you just wouldn't think a four-year-old could understand. So it's always fun times with her. Um, and I think tomorrow I wanna to talk to you about VSG, because I've also had VSG, vertical sleeve gastrectomy. I had it three years ago, nearly, yeah, th just over three years ago. So this affects, um, some of you might look at how much I eat and go, that surely can't be enough, but I can only eat small portions. And I'll, I would just say this, I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy. Do I regret having it? No, I don't, actually don't regret having it. Have I lost weight with it? No. I lost initially 15, 16, 17 kilos, and then I put 10 of them, I put over the three years, that they just didn't stay off with my small eating portions. Um, I do supplement and all those things, and look, it was a life choice I made. I've had the lap band surgery as well, and the lap band removed. So, Yeah, I haven't really told my story about all of my weight loss because I'm just, I don't think I'm ready to do that at the moment. But I do, um, I do want to talk about VSG and I, you know, I, I would actually love to offer support to others that have had bariatric surgery of some type. And, you know, I don't know, I suppose we don't want to feel judged, you know? Like, we make decisions in life based on the best information we have at the time, the, the best choices we feel we can make at the time. And honestly, it's been, it's been such a difficult journey for me. And so when I had the lap band done, which was probably 15, I, I need to find which year. It was 06, 07, 08, it was somewhere around there. And I need to work out and write it down because I always, <laughs> always think, what year was it? Um, and then I had it removed in 18 or 19. And then I had lap band surgery end of 20. Um, and I felt like all of those decisions were the right decisions at the time. I have done keto. I've done so many programs that have been effective marginally and now i have the um the consideration of lipedema now with lipedema um i haven't done too much research because i'm a little bit scared to be honest with you and it's about abnormal fat i don't know a lot more than that and then i've, I've joined a couple of groups and i'm just sort of reading a few comments and just gingerly tiptoeing myself in there and someone was talking about leg pumps the other day and I was like, what is that? And why do you need that? <sighs> anyway, this is, it's, a, it's quite a vulnerable thing to talk about, honestly. Um, so, yeah, just managing 
it, it does answer a lot of questions. Like lipedema for me, I haven't been diagnosed yet. I'm pretty sure from all the information, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the situation. I have, you know, these abnormal fat pockets and oh, look, I'm not gonna go into it right now, but uh, it apparently can affect your weight loss. And I was listening to that lady I talked about, um, I think it's Dr. C.O.S. Anyway, I don't want to misquote her. I will find out what her name is. Uh, she does lipedema simplified. And in the first five minutes, she was talking about how you go to the doctor and they say, go away and lose some weight. And you, you just pull your hair out because that's what you're trying to do. And everybody thinks you're just not disciplined enough and you're just not, you're not good enough and you're just not, you just can't work it out and you're just stupid. You just need to not eat. And I've done all of it. I've done all of it and I've had surgeries. Anyway, I'm I don't I'm hesitant I'm hesitant to say this is the solution because life has taught me. I'm in my 50s now and life has taught me after 40 years of dieting and all the things, life has taught me that there is never just one solution. There just isn't. Every time I've found something new that has helped me, has actually helped me. I thought, this is it, this is it. Well, I'm probably not gonna do that anymore. I'm probably not, I'm, I'm, prob I'm not thinking that way about lipedema. I'm not thinking, not that that is a solution because it's not a solution. It, it, it is, it does make sense of some of the dynamics I have to deal with. But again, I'm, I'm undiagnosed. And to be honest, I am not, I'm not going there just yet. I'm not going there just yet. I'm just researching. This is just the way I do things. So, um, yes. You know, I figured I would share at some point because that's part of the whole reason I'm doing these vlogs and making all this effort. It's a lot of work doing vlogs and videoing food and editing and all the rest. And I'm, it's an investment into me first of all, and then it's also an investment into anyone that could benefit from my story, just from the, and learn and maybe not make the same mistakes I've made. That would be awesome. Maybe launch from a different place because of some information, you know? So, so yeah, we all ride the waves of life, don't we? The waves that we encounter, the waves that we create, the waves that we don't create, the waves that just come. We all have choices to make in the midst of all of that and no one wants to be judged for the choices they've made. They, we just want to find people that love and accept us even when we're not doing things, everything right, it doesn't feel right or it isn't perhaps, you know. So anyway, I'll leave it there. I would love to, I will talk about VSG surgery again bariatric surgeries. Mm. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that, but that's the reality for my life. The new space of lipedema, just discovering that. Um, again, I haven't gone and watched it yet, but I know Dr. Berry um, did talk to a lady who is a bit of an expert. And so I, I, will, I will look at that. I will, I'm creeping up on it. I'm creeping up on it. I don't wanna freak out my brain too much because I have to stay focused on getting this carnivore under my belt, right? Eating zero carb. Um, that's the reason why I put spices and seasonings in my food because I'm not trying to be um, a beef and salt person. That's not, uh, that's not my goal. My goal is to be a zero carb person because I don't feel good when I have carbs. Sugar really affects me. I, I ha I'm not a diabetic. I haven't um, been ever diagnosed as one with all of my blood sugar tests and I don't want to become a diabetic. And so that's been really the main reason why I've done keto and ketovore the last five, six years. And then, and also been experimenting with carnivore is because it keeps me in a low, low, low carb state, right? And that's useful to me because I don't want to become a diabetic. Um, yeah, so, that is my goal and that is my why, really. 
my blood sugars and that sort of thing. And yeah, I understand insulin resistance. You know, I understand there's implications from other things like sweeteners and all that. I get that. I can only do one thing at a time though. So I've got to focus and get this one thing as a practice and a lifestyle discipline first before I go on to becoming more strict or paying more of a price, getting more disciplined, right? My physical activity, like my mobility is not great. It hasn't been for the last year, couple of years. And, and that's a driving force for me to get more mobility, you know, in my life. So um, anyway, at this point, I'm just going on and on. I could talk, look, couldn't we all talk about all our things? <laughs> so on that note, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna tune in tomorrow and we will talk more then. Well, at least I will, but feel free to talk back down below. Just love, I love it when people comment. I had a few comments yesterday. Like one, I think it was a lady, but I'm not sure. Um, sounded like a lady, but it could have been a gentleman, I suppose, chatting away to me. And they live in Perth, which was awesome. Because you just, it's always, everyone's always so far away, it feels like. So please say hi down in the comments. Let me know what you're doing. I'd love to know. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best. Hope you have a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever you're doing. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Mwah. Bye.